my kids need a credit in this. I've stolen so, I've stolen so many things from their toy box for <laughs> different videos. Today we're on Messier 89, which is a galaxy in the Virgo cluster. It was discovered by Messier on one very productive night, the most productive night of his hunting for Messier objects. He discovered eight galaxies in the Virgo cluster and a globular cluster all on a single night. What's remarkable or a little different about it is that it's perfectly round or it appears to be perfectly round on the sky. So it's the type of galaxy that we call an E0 or an elliptical class zero object. So this goes back to a very famous classification that was first devised by Edwin Hubble. We call it the Hubble tuning fork diagram. And this is a completely empirical way of classifying galaxies. So this is just Hubble taking all the galaxies he can see and putting them in some sort of system according to what he thinks they look like. And so we've got the two classes, we've got the elliptical galaxies, and then we've got the beautiful spiral galaxies that we always think of. And they go out in two branches because one branch has an extra feature that's a bar. But otherwise, they get uh, sort of more loosely wound spiral arms and smaller bulges in the center. And then as we go from the, uh, along the elliptical branch, we've got the really flattened, elongated galaxies, the E7s, all the way down to the perfect apparent circles that are the E0. Now the reason I'm using words like apparent and appears is because we don't know the galaxy's three-dimensional shape from an image. This is one of the intense frustrations of being an observational astronomer, that you see a universe that is three-dimensional projected into two dimensions. And whether it's talking about the shape of an individual object or the structure of the entire universe along the line of sight, we can use tricks and physics to try to infer some of that extra information, that third dimension, but we never know for sure. We can't turn the universe around. We can't wait hundreds of millions of years for our orientation to change. I thought redshift and blue shift just solved everything for you and you knew how far away everything was and could then plot it three-dimensionally using that. Well, that's the next video, Brady. <laughs> Back to our galaxy. So I've set up a little experiment here and if this goes correctly, it's a little unfair because these are galaxies made out of Play-Doh and light shining from them and you're getting extra information that way. If you look with the camera or if you look with just one eye so that you don't have stereoscopic vision, Hopefully, what you'll see through your viewfinder is that you've got three galaxies that all look very similar. They all look very round, okay? And so this is, this is what we might see in an image, and this is what we're faced with with M89. The question is, is it really a round spherical object seen from all three dimensions, or in the case of these galaxies, is it something different? So here's our round spherical galaxy and it looks the same no matter which angle that you look at it from. But these ones look quite different. This one is roughly... <laughs> a hot dog. Yeah, we, we call it a, a prolate galaxy. It's meant to be kind of rugby ball shaped. And that's a galaxy that maybe has some rotation. The stars are rotating preferentially, symmetrically, about the long axis. So that's a cigar shape. But seen end on, it still looks round. And then the other possibility is a galaxy like this. This is an oblate galaxy, and it's the same idea. This time, the stars um, might have a preferential ro rotation around this direction. That's a baby bell cheese. Yeah, so it's flat, but again, seen from the right perspective, you wouldn't be able to distinguish it. There's another class, which is a triaxial galaxy, in which there's no preferential axis of rotation. There's, you know, there's, there's three axes to the shape, um, but, but no, no sy symmetry in the rotation. And so that's basically where we are. Which, which, gal which galaxy is M89? I can't tell you for sure. You might make the argument that you're more likely to, it's more likely to be this one because you can see that shape from every other angle. Um, but then there's physical explanations that say a low redshift that we might be more prone to seeing oblate galaxies. 
Um, we might have to just wait a few hundred million years to find out which one it is. You can make sort of statistical arguments on classes of galaxies because you can say, right, well, it will be, there'll be concentrated surface brightness for prolate galaxies if you're viewing them this way, whereas these ones will be more concentrated because you're seeing more stars along that axis. So if you look at a whole population, you might be able to infer if you've got more of one than the other. The other interesting thing about this is that although in, in the image that you might see, it looks like just a really very smooth, very, very round, very symmetric, very boring looking galaxy. If you look at it the right way, as so often happens, you see some interesting things. Um, so this was one of the first galaxies to be determined to be, have, have shells around it, shells of stars. The way this was found was using very, very deep imaging on photographic plates uh, with a telescope in Australia. And those very deep images revealed some very faint stellar structure around the outside. And so this is an image from a paper published in 1979 in the journal Nature by an, uh, an astronomer and famed astrophotographer David Malin. And you can see, whereas the original image was just some small little round thing that's much smaller than, than the scale of this image, this really deep image shows structure extending hundreds of thousands of light years away from the central region. You can see little edges and shells, you can see this um, structure around here, and you can see a linear structure, which they called a, a jet, but which is actually likely the, the distorted remnants of some little dwarf galaxy that's being pulled apart by the gravitational force. Now we know that if we look at many elliptical galaxies like this, if you look faint enough, if you look carefully enough, you see the remnants of shredded galaxies, um, which is how we think these things are built up in the first place, by mergers, by cannibalism of smaller galaxies. Uh, and this is sort of seeing it in action. Oh, wow. Uh. You didn't tell me it was this cool. <laughs> Look at this. Oh. I These totally feel like Indiana Jones right yeah. now. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> just so you know, I don't actually need this light. I just think it looks cool. 